Shalom and welcome, Chabarim. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation about the battle of the mind. Today I'd like to examine the battle of the mind from a different perspective than what we have in the past. We always think about our thoughts. We think about what Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 6. And we read about the battle of the mind, but today we're going to look at it from a slightly different angle and try to understand things that we have not really understood. So let's go. Let's have a look. What do you think? All right. Jump straight in. Today our lesson will examine what the energy of love is. Where does love come from and how is that to do with the battle of the mind? So let's have a look at the energy of love. That'll be one of the things that we'll first examine. Once we've had a look at that, moving on, we'll have a look at the vortex of love and understanding what do I mean by the vortex of love. Let's have a look at that. Then we're going to examine the holy name, the holy name yud Hey vav Hey, but in a way that maybe some of you have not thought of or examined before. So we're going to have a look at it in a different way than maybe you've ever really had a look at it before. And then bringing it together towards the end of the lesson, we're going to try and understand how this is for us how we walk this out in our personal faith, how we understand these things so we can live these things through our Messiah, Yeshua of Nazareth. And of course, the last one, we're going to see how God never changes. So let's get onto it. And I'll start off now with a prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your people, the nation of Israel, all of those grafted in from every tongue, tribe and nation, everybody from every person that is here today listening at whatever time they've chosen to watch this video, I pray that you open their hearts and their minds to understanding your word. May they be like the Bereans, as Paul mentioned, so that they search the scriptures for themselves, not allowing themselves to be deceived, but truly learning the scriptures from a Hebraic perspective, going back to the original languages and from the roots of our faith so that they can explore the true meaning of these things and understand them the way that they were meant to be understood when they were written and when Yeshua taught these things to the disciples. Let's get back to the original meaning and the way the Ruach HaKodesh would like 
and want us to understand him. Thank you for joining me today. Today is the 3rd of January and we now have entered the third day obviously of the pagan new year, a new cycle, a new beginning and God has been working with his people in an incredible way during the COVID knock lockdowns and, and, and all of the mayhem that's been going on around the world. So these are the some of the things that I have been studying during this time and feel led that it's time to now share some of the meaning for those that need some catching up. There are people out there who still believe in a God that lives outside of themselves. Now, if you're part of a mainstream religion, whether it be Christianity, Judaism, or something else, but specifically the biblical faiths, the ones that claim like Judaism and Christianity that we believe in the Bible, that is our scripture, the first and the second part, whether you're, if you're a Jew and you only believe in the Torah, the prophets and the writings. But for those who are Christians, the addition of the New Testament. So let's examine it from those perspectives, but from the Hebraic perspectives. So moving on now to the beginning of our presentation, I've given you this slide showing you a vortex and how it would look maybe in a black hole and I'm giving you this shape for a reason. As we progress through this presentation, you'll understand why. So, most people know what a cyclone or a tornado looks like. They understand that um, these things move around. And in the middle of these, these vortices is an eye. Have you noticed that? But what happens in the eye? So let's explain a few things from a, in, a, in a simple way. I was fortunate in some respects, it's quite a scary experience, but I was fortunate to experience on a personal level what it's like to be in the middle of a vortex that's a cyclone. So I lived in far north Queensland, in Cairns. And back in the late 80s, I was up there and I was in the middle with my family in a cyclone called Cyclone Winifred. And that cyclone passed over us and literally the vortex had us inside and it was a very unusual feeling. It wasn't unsettling, it wasn't bad, but it was peaceful. But why it felt unusual, I think, is because you know that outside of this vortex, everything's crazy. I mean, you're talking winds that are in excess of 200, up to 300, who knows how many miles per hour the winds can get up to when a cyclone can go right up to a Category 5, maybe even 6. I don't know how, how high, but I know there's Category 5 cyclones. And the wind gusts and those types of things are devastating. But the moment you're, you're in the vortex or in the center of that cyclone, it's dead quiet. There's nothing. It's still. There might be a little bit of breeze, a little a strange sort of breeze, but there's no real movement. All the trees are still. Everything goes still. But outside of that vortex, as soon as you step outside of the vortex, guess what? Boom. It's crazy. It's truly something that... Um, it, it's incredible to experience. So we see these patterns, these spiral patterns in so many things. Many of you at this time, those of you searching for knowledge, those of you searching for God's wisdom, those of you who study the scriptures, will, will have found many things relating to this. So in scripture itself, we see these vortices we see them in sometimes places that are not so open about it, but it's there. And let's have a look at it. Because we're going to see something about God that makes him so unique. Not only generally speaking, but literally within ourselves. So it's important 
on a personal level for each one of us of the faith, the faith that Yeshua HaMashiach is a Lord and Saviour to each one of us personally. We have our own testimony of a salvation that we've been going through, not only now, but our entire life. And he called us. And during that time, we've experienced things. And this is going to explain to us, this teaching, why things happen the way they do sometimes. And the very nature that God has, it's like a fingerprint of him being there, knowing that it's his presence. So let's now take a look again at this vortex. So we use time as our first example. We're told in the book of Hebrews, Paul tells us in the book of Hebrews that God is the same God yesterday, today and forever. And we'll go into that a little more shortly. But it's important to bring it up in the introduction. Because time, as you know, has its past, its present, and its future. However, that's how we are taught that time works. But in all truth, there's only now. That's it. There's only now. The real biblical time is now. So the past was now. The present is now. And the future is now because we create our future from now. Interesting. Fascinating. Most people who study meditation, most people understand some of these principles. But when we're thinking about God himself, he moves by the power of his spirit in a vortex. So let's have a look. I've, drew, I've, I've put on this slide, I am, but I am. But where does it say, but? I am what I am, or I am who I am, or I am, but I am, I am. But what is that word? What does it mean? Well, now let's, let's examine, and let's have a look at energy, frequency, and vibration to understand how the Holy Spirit is working within us and how the Holy Spirit has left its testimony through our ancient fathers that had lived biblically before us and how in the scriptures we get these examples. Now, many of you would have known or have heard of the famous gentleman by the name of Nikola Tesla. One of my favorite pe people to study and to listen to and to be challenged by. As we can see, he had many sayings, he did many interviews, he did things and he revealed things to us and most of the technology that we use today has come from Nikola Tesla originally. Whether it was stolen from him or whether it was openly created by him. So if you wish to understand the universe, according to Nikola Tesla, he says you need to think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Go back and study the life of Nikola Tesla and learn about what he means by this. And so today, hopefully, from this lesson, you will come away feeling more enlightened that you understand what he meant by those words. We know that there are laws that govern the universe. There's the law of compensation and so on and so forth. We have what's called in this diagram the cosmic pendulum. So without getting into too much technicality, we will just look at this slide and later on we'll probably at the end of this maybe revisit or you can revisit and this will make so much more sense. This law and why these things that we're discussing today 
make complete and total sense regarding the scriptures and who our creator who lives in each one of us, who he is in here. So, this next picture is a vortex, a vortex. But it's showing you the field around the vortex, and they call this a Taurus energy field. Now, if you can imagine energy flowing around our human body in this exact same way, this is exactly how we work, how we operate, and how God created us to be in this world, and how we are to have our energy flowing through our body. Unfortunately, because of the lifestyle that people live, this is affected by many different environments and scenarios and circumstances within each individual race. Like if their people are subjected to pollution or they're subjected to disease and sickness, this energy flow will indeed be corrupted. But if everything flows correctly, if everything operates correctly according to this flow of energy through our body, we can live a good, long and healthy life. So now we've had a quick look at the energy flow around our body and we're just covering the very basics to get a visual image of some of this to help us understand the bigger picture. Tesla, he discovered that there were three numbers. And these numbers, three, six, and nine, reveal the mysteries of the universe from a mathematical standpoint and was the very foundation that Nikola Tesla came to the understanding of the ether known by many people as the Holy Spirit, the spirit that dwells in the whole universe, left by the creator that moves throughout the energy flow, the waves of energy. All of these things in the universe all have a connection to this same fingerprint of mathematics left behind by the creator in these codes, these numeratical codes, three, six, and nine. Now, when we hear three, six, and nine, it's very interesting because we can take it back to the Hebrew numbers and look at it from Hebraically to understand, well, was, was this affecting Israel and the Bible and our ancient fathers back then when they lived? Well, it was. So number three is represented by the Hebrew letter Gimel. Number six is represented by the letter uh, Vav, of course, this letter here in Yeshua's name on my T-shirt, right? Vav, that's number six. And the last one is number nine, right? Tesha is when we're telling the time, number nine. Number nine is the number that we use to think about being born again, for example. And it takes nine months for a child in the mother's womb. But Nikola Tesla found out some things about these numbers that are truly fascinating. And in this teaching today, we're not going to look greatly at the numbers three, six, and nine, but, but just simply that they're everywhere. And these are something that we need to look into to understand what I'm about to talk about today, what I'm getting into today. Now, these diagrams that Nikola Tesla's got here on the board are very significant diagrams regarding the way that energy waves move and particles in the universe, but also the current and the flow of energy while Nikola Tesla was the man who really gave us the alternating current and his rival Edison was the direct current. 
And Nikola Tesla, as you all know, or those who look into his life will know, that he wanted to give us free energy. And he, he, he gave us examples where he could do that very easily. But unfortunately, due to big money, greedy people, we're stuck in the situation where we use a combination of those things and everything DC and AC is controlled by the government. And we are heavily taxed and pay a lot of money in some cases, especially here in Australia, for our utilities like electricity. So now we're moving into renewable fuels and renewable energies because of obvious reasons. So we're starting to see a lot of Nikola Tesla's uh, technology and, and inventions come out to light through people like Elon Musk, who owns the Tesla car company. So we're going to see more and more of this and learn more and more about this as time passes by. But this doesn't change what Nikola Tesla was talking about earlier, that when we want to have the keys to the universe, we need to think of energy, frequency, and vibration. And we need to consider these numbers, three, six, and nine, as we start to study this particular topic regarding energy. And you will see later, and everything will make sense to you as we progress. Now I'm going to take you directly to the scriptures as we can see here in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. I want to take you to this passage specifically because we're looking directly at who God himself introduces himself in this unique way to Moses on Mount Sinai. God asked, he asked Moses, and what am I to tell the children of Israel? How am I supposed to introduce you and tell them who you are? And God's answer to Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu is simply, I am who I am. I am who I am. Okay. Let's stop there. First of all, we are told that if the God of Israel is for us, who can be against us? And that Yeshua of Nazareth is living in us. So if that's the case, then this God who introduced himself through Moses to the nation of Israel is living in us. And that's what this connection is going to be about. Because here we see these words, er, asher, er, written more than once, but in this particular case is very unique. Many of us who study the Hebrew language from a biblical standpoint recognize the significance of not only the letters and their meaning, but the numeratical value that these letters have. So we're going to look at that here, but we're also wanting to examine this particular structure of words. Why I am who I am. Why? What I want to show you here is what we saw in the diagram of Nikola Tesla. If you visualize this as a cyclone and the word a share or a share in the middle is the vortex and on either side of the vortex are the arms of the cyclone like the spirals of the cyclone or the spirals of the galaxy or the spiral pattern in the middle of a piece of cabbage if you cut it in half, or in flowers. You'll see it everywhere, this spiral. And it's literally in us, in everything. The same pattern, the same fingerprint. And here we have it. But in the same way, when Moses was placed into the cleft of a rock, God placed his hand over the rock to protect Moses, and God moved in a vortex. And one minute he passed by, and the next minute Moses was able to look, and he saw the Lord from behind. 
could not see the face of God at that particular time. Very interesting. When we examine the value of these letters in Hebrew, which is what we're going to do, we're going to find some very interesting detail to this particular subject. So let's do a little bit of calculating. And we need to also continue, we also need to have a look at the word Moshe, because that's Moses. Moses to Israel, to the Jewish people especially, represents the Mashiach, because the word Moshe actually is an abbreviation of the word Mashiach. So Moses was a saviour to Israel, bringing us out of Egypt, saving us out of bondage and slavery, and bringing us into the promised land eventually through Joshua and Caleb. Moses, of course, did this with his brother and his sister, with Aaron and Miriam. But in this passage, we see because he represents the Mashiach and who represents Iyer, Asher, Iyer, I am who I am. Now let's look at the numbers. Let's look at some numbers here and just examine it. So the word Moshe, if we have a look here, we see Moshe, the shin, the letter shin, adds up to 300. The mem that Moshe begins with, m in Hebrew, adds up to 40. And the hay at the end of the letter, which is like, a breath from God, his holy breath, that adds up to five. 345, and Moses is the reflection of God, like we are meant to be the reflection of God or the reflection of the Messiah himself. Then we go to the word Iyer, Asher or Aser, Ie. I am who I am, and the meaning here. So let's do the Gemetria now and work out what this adds up to in the Hebrew. So I've done this little chart here. Aleph, the first letter here, represents one in the Hebrew language, then He, then, Va, then, then Yud, and then He in the holy name. And that adds up to, wouldn't you know it? 21, triple seven, wouldn't you know it? Yeah, triple seven. Now, when you add 21, two and one together, what do you get? Three. True? Three? Yeah. Remember what we were talking about? Three, six, and nine? Yes. Right. Here's number three. Two and one, 21, add up to three. Why? This is significant when we're looking at biblical Hebrew. It may not be something you've learnt to understand yet, but once you start to study Gematria, you're going to see patterns that can't be recreated by human hands. These were given by God in the Holy Scriptures to prove that this is his fingerprint on the truth and that in us, as he writes the Scriptures, the Torah, on our hearts, we too will have that same truth and be able to test that it is the truth and not the lies that are being uh, told to us by our governments and in this world in general by the master of lies, who we know. And we won't even mention that name, that insect. All right, so the word I share adds up to 500 and one. And when you add 501 and 21 and 21, you get 543. 501, five plus one is six. Now you have three, six, three. Now this might sound a little bit crazy to you at the moment. Don't, don't worry too much. It'll all make sense shortly. But just have a look at these numbers and you can go back and study this in your slides. 
Now let's have another look at something else. When you take the name Moses, 300, that adds up to 345, and you add 543, oh, we'll look at this, triple eight, 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 eight. Now, anybody who knows about biblical numbers knows that eight by itself is significant, let alone three eights. That's like God saying, no one can be like me. I am the living God. I am unique and I create all of you unique so nobody can be like me. No one can be like God, except we are God. We are made in his image, in his uniqueness, in his likeness. So we have him living in us, this unique God, and this number in his holy name with the Mashiach, Moses in this case, adds up to 888. Do you think God's trying to get our attention here? Right. Three times eight is 24. Two plus four is six. There's those numbers. I'm just saying there's those numbers. Three, six, and nine. It always comes back to three, six, and and nine, you're always going to see that there. And it just so happens that the word ahuv, which is the word for love, which comes for ahuva, love in Hebrew, adds up. We have one, aleph is one, he is five, and the letter bet is two, the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. What does it add up to? Eight. Love is eight. So God is what? Love, love, love. What is this love? What is it? What does it mean? Eight, eight, eight. A hoof, a hoof, a hoof. Three times, three times. Do you think there's something here? Right. Our brain moves in waves. We're sending waves of energy out with how we think, how we feel, how we act. And wherever you focus your, your attention is where your energy is. If we think of energy and we're thinking of our day, our thoughts when we wake up in the morning or we go to bed, those thoughts and feelings that we have throughout each day start the ones that start our day and the ones that end our day when we go to sleep not only affect us but affect all of those around us in how we think and how we're projecting energy is it good energy positive energy or not so good why today's teaching is so relevant for each one of us is because we were taught to pray to a God in heaven, to pray to a God that is over here and doing this. And, and whenever we pray, we pray to the air, we pray to Jesus in Jesus name or in this and that. Right. OK, we all know that. But God is living inside of us. Every thought that we have, every action that we take, everything we do does not separate us from God. Those of us who live by faith live in this vortex. Adam and Eve, when they were in the Garden of Eden, were in the vortex. They didn't need anything outside of that vortex. They had God's provision there. They had everything they needed. There was no effect of time. They didn't age. They didn't get sick. They didn't have any issues with their with the you know other creatures that God had created in the Garden of Eden. There was only the one that they had their struggle with, their issue with. But everything else in the Garden of Eden was perfect until they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then something happened. And what was it? The tree, when they ate of it, 
cause good and evil to mix. But God said from the beginning, I separate light from the darkness. I separate day from night. I separate good from evil. Everything has an opposite, a positive, a negative. There is negative and positive energy. Now, in our mind, every day, we have negative and positive energy, potential energy. It can go either this way or that way, positive or negative. But that is going to be up to us because we are not caught up in the powerful arms of the storm where anything can happen and the storm can toss us about and it could bring us into a place where everything goes well or it could go terribly wrong. But at the end of the day, those storms are filled with positive and negative energy being mixed together, mixed together, and they have to work themselves out so that in the end, the storm will dissipate and do its job. But in the midst of the storm is the eye, and the eye is dead still. But the vortex of the eye carries with it something that is so powerful, especially from a creation standpoint, if we look at black holes. Because nobody knows what's going to come out the other side of a black hole. It's all assumption. Nobody understands black holes with complete certainty that they know everything, everything is still theorized. We've never been through a black hole that we know of. We've never experienced a black hole on a personal level. We study black holes. We're trying to understand them more and more, but there are many things about black holes we do not still understand. As we come to the threshold of a black hole, it's called the event horizon. And that event horizon is there that it's a point where once you pass that point, there is no way back. Now, I don't know about you, but I've passed that point. I've gone past that point called the event horizon when it comes to God's love. How do I know that? Because it was Yeshua who promised us. I will remember your sins no more. I will remember your sins no more. That's it. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Not, oh, well, maybe over here or maybe over there or maybe I'll change my mind later and maybe do something. No. God is the same God yesterday, today and forever. Now, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. If you imagine yourself, visualize yourself as a storm. Now, are you the storm? No. It's the God of Israel living in you is the storm. They said to Donald Trump during the 2016 election, someone whispered in his ear, what's it like to be in this great big storm? And what did Donald Trump say to that reporter? He whispered in there quietly and he said, don't worry, I am the storm. Now, I want you to consider how you are the storm in your own life. And around you is this negative and positive energy. But with complete and total assurity, you have the Messiah living in you, the God of Israel, who says that greater is he in us than us who was in this world. And if I am for you, my name, yud Hey vav Hey, the Holy One of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach, I live in you. If I am for you, who can possibly be against you? Let me revise, give you Chaim's version of a biblical account. We were reminded in the book of Kings, I believe, the story of King Saul before he became king. He was not inaugurated at this stage. This was before he was called to be the king of Israel. And he was walking in the Negev, in the wilderness somewhere with his sons. 
and companions and their livestock, their donkeys and other possessions. And suddenly out of nowhere, a whirlwind came up. One of these storms, like a, a, a willy wind tornado, whatever you want to call it. And suddenly all of the belongings, the donkeys, the livestock, everything was taken up into this whirlwind and completely disappeared. And only Saul and his son, Jonathan, and the other son and whoever else was there was there and everything else had gone. And they were looking around going, what's happened to us? What have we done to deserve this? It's everything we own. What? what why is this happening to us? We, have we offended God maybe? So under Jonathan's suggestion, he said, well, it is me that has heard in a nearby town there is a great prophet there and maybe he can let us know why this has happened to us. So let us go to the town and see if we find this prophet. So then the story in the scriptures takes us to the town and, of course, who should be there almost immediately waiting for them is the great prophet Samuel, who would later be the prophet that would uh, anoint King David. But Samuel meets Saul for the first time and talks to Jonathan and he, son, he talks to his sons. And, and one of the questions was, you wouldn't happen to know where all of our things ended up and why this has happened to us, etc., etc. And Samuel answers him in this unusual way and he says, oh, don't worry about that. They're all out the front over there. They're all being watered and fed and everything's fine. You don't have to worry about your things. What? What did he just say? A minute ago, that was all picked up in a great big storm and flung everywhere around the Negev. And now all of a sudden, he's going to tell us that everything's, oh, the donkeys are being fed and watered and everything's fine. No, 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 no. Something's going on here. That vortex picked up all of that stuff, all those creatures, all of Saul's belongings and brought it to the town so that he would meet with the prophet and he would meet Samuel and Samuel would tell him everything that he told him about becoming the king. So that was the beginning. Now we see the move of God right there. We see it everywhere we go. Everywhere we go in scripture. If you start to see this, what I'm teaching you today, this vortex that's moving within us, you're going to see it all through scripture when Yeshua goes through a crowd of people and he's talking and the people around him are listening and the audience as they listen. There are so many different examples, but this energy is in our mind. It's in our thoughts and it's all about the now. If we live in the now, we're not bound by time. We're not bound by anything. Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights with the God of Israel. He didn't age. He didn't drink. He didn't eat. Because he didn't even realize he was... Let me ask you all a question. Have you been to a friend's house or to the church or to the, a fellowship of some kind? And you're all together fellowshipping and you're praying and you're worshipping God and you're giving glory to God and you love him and you, all of these things are happening you're singing, you're flying your banners or whatever it is that you do. You blow your shofar, you sing, you pray in tongues, you do whatever it is that you're doing. You've been there and then suddenly what happens later on, you oh, you wouldn't happen to know what time it is. And you go to look at the time, you go, what? What time? My Lord, we've been here all of that time. It doesn't feel like we've been here long at all. Well, because you've been in a vortex. Because God has taken this, what's in here in our mind, and taken us to that vortex that the Holy Spirit moves through us with. And we have become resonant with that frequency and energy of the Holy Spirit. It's God's love with us. His love, his energy, his frequency, not you. Not me, not our old nature that Paul spoke about in Romans chapter 7 that we're always battling against that does the very opposite. That's irrelevant. It's God's grace, his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness and everything that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter of the Bible, discusses is in that vortex. And if you understand that that vortex is filled with his love 
And everything outside of that vortex it can go either this way or that way because of positive and negative energy. Because everybody else is in the world who's not a follower of Yeshua, they're moving in the randomness of the world. That's why the Lord called us out of the world. And he wants us with him in fellowship with him in that place, in that vortex. Now, this is controversial for some of you. I'm going to tell you straight what I believe, that Shabbat is in that vortex. You want Shabbat? You can have Shabbat on a Monday. You can have Shabbat on a Thursday. How do you get Shabbat? It's the peace, the eternal peace that you feel when you enter in to the spirit of the Sabbath itself. If you worship God, if you're with God, if you're, yes, there's the physical day of the Sabbath. I'm not denying that. I'm not talking about Saturdays. I'm not trying to get into any of that stuff. I'm just simply saying that the Mashiach made the Sabbath for us. God made the Sabbath for us to rest and we have that rest, that peace living inside of us and we can access that Sabbath. You know, when we say Shavuot Tov at the beginning of a new week after the Sabbath has ended and we have Havdalah and we, you know, the, the symbolic uh, ending of the Sabbath and those things and the representations of what those things mean, we take the Sabbath or the light of the Sabbath with us throughout the whole week. You're meant to take Shabbat with you everywhere. So it doesn't matter what day it is. And Paul also knew this because he discussed it. He said, don't let anyone judge you on the Sabbaths or the feasts and how you keep them and what you do. Because they're only shadows of things to come. They are not the true, they, they are a picture to help us learn, to remember the true meaning of the Sabbath. So I implore all of you to study this for yourself to have a look at this teaching, to play it back, to listen and consider the things that I've shared with you and understand that our first parents had suits of light before the fall. They came down into this world, contracted in these physical bodies and they were tested. And we are with Messiah because of what they did. If they didn't come into this world, then we might not have ever known the Mashiach. So they came down and did what they did so all of God's children could know salvation through Yeshua, our Messiah. So thank God for Adam and Hava, our first parents, that they did what they did. And Hava was indeed deceived by the serpent and Adam came into this world. So like the Messiah, he could save all of us. That is the true message. Because if he didn't come, if he said to Chava, I'm staying in the Garden of Eden, you're the one who ate, I'm going to let you die out there by yourself, and I'm not going to come with you, mark my words, none of us would ever eat from the tree of life, because it was through Adam that we know the second Adam. It is through Adam that we have come to be able to receive the Ruach HaKodesh, to be born again, to be baptized in the Spirit, through the spirit, the blood, and the water, and that we too will have the ability to eat from the tree of life. Now, I hope this lesson has been something interesting for you to think about and to study. I want you to remember also that this is about the now. Everything is now. There is no past, present, and future. There's only now, and God is in now. So that when you meditate, you're meditating about now, you're concentrating on your breathing. You're centering yourself in a way you're not worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. You, worry, you don't have to worry. The Lord said, don't worry about anything. Now, I'm not, I know better than anyone else like all of you out there listening to this message, it, those examples Yeshua gave us might sound easy when he rolled them off his tongue to all of us, but when we actually put them into practice, not always the case. Trying to remain calm in difficult situations, trying to be patient and self-controlled and all of it. But it's the very, those very difficult things that are the training ground for us to develop our skills, to be more patient, to be more compassionate, to show more kindness and love. These are the things that we are able to do but it's the Holy Spirit working within us. So wherever we go, we are God. We are Yeh, Asher, 
Ie, the image of the Messiah, the living God in us. And as we grow in our faith, we overcome those things that have haunted us from our past life, from our previous life and experiences, and even the things that we're experiencing as followers of Yeshua, we're always going to be better off as we're always educated every single day. The Lord said he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. So I leave you finally with that last, lastly, I, I leave you from this presentation with the word Bereshit and uh, knowing that in the beginning was the word, was the son and he's living in the universe. He's living in us. He's living in everything, every breath you take, everything you do. He is our divine character. So going back now, to, I wanted to now recap with you everything that we've discussed. We spoke about the energy of love living in us. God is that energy. yud hey vav hey living in us. He is the vortex. Wherever we go, the vortex should go. But think about it too. Remember that we're not always listening to the Holy Spirit. Excuse me while I have a drink for a moment. My mouth's a little thirsty. Thank you for that. Yes, so the vortex, that is where God's love is. Wherever that vortex is, is where God's love is. Now we have to ask that vortex to be with us on a regular basis. It's fellowship, it's intimacy. The Holy Spirit can either be pushed down or raised up, depending on us, our state of mind, what's going on in here. If we're talking about negativity all day, listening to negative things, listening to negative people, around negative situations, all of those things, it's going to bring our energy, our frequency and our vibration down. And that, the low energy, the low frequency, the low vibration, they're the things that cause depression and anxiety and sickness and disease. Those are the things that we do not want as followers of Yeshua. We need to be walking with healthy minds, with, a, with love and peace and joy and happiness in our heart as we walk out our faith with our Mashiach living here in our hearts and in our minds. Now, Mike Tyson's trainer, Customato, the famous boxing trainer, the Italian trainer who trained uh, Mike Tyson, he told Mikey when he was training him, he said that he believed that when God created man, he created him with a body to protect his brain, that the whole body was created by God to protect one thing, this in here, this brain, because that's our computer. If we, if something happens to that, we can be in a lot of trouble, especially when it comes to our knowledge of God. But the Holy Spirit uses that and our heart and the rest of our body to connect to us. Today we've learned that in the Holy Name, as God moves through us, He creates through His love a vortex, an energy vortex. Now that vortex can either throw people out or bring people in. It'll either toss out or bring in. It, it, it's like a vacuum. It will suck, and, but there are some things it just won't, it'll reject, it'll spit back out again. And what did Yeshua say? I'll spit you out of my mouth if you are lukewarm. So you're either hot or cold. So the holy name, we discussed how God moves in the vortex everywhere. He put Moses in the rock. You know, everything you see when, when Elijah called down the fire from heaven, there was a vortex. And, and you saw the, 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 the sacrifice get licked up and, and uh, Elijah put water everywhere so that the wood was wet. When God came down in that fire and licked up that sacrifice, it was taken up by the vortex of the Holy Spirit, by God's love, and there was nothing more powerful than his spirit and his love. And our purpose is to share the message that God is living in us. His kingdom's here. Out of you will flow rivers of living water because he lives here and in here. 
So every day we need to think about that. And we need to learn about our supernatural senses that the Holy Spirit has within us. What's an example? You want to know what your spiritual smell is, for example. Well, think about a rose and, and visualize a rose. Visualize a pink rose. Now, take that rose as you visualize that beautiful pink rose. Any shade of pink you want, or even make it red, make it blue. Do whatever you want with your beautiful imagination. And visualize the color. Visualize the stem. Visualize some thorns. Visualize even a little bit of crystallized water that's on the flowers or the petals of the flower. Make it real to yourself and visualize in your imagination. But smell the rose. And guess what? Most of you, those of you who have smelt a rose, when you visualize it, you'll smell it. Well, that's a spiritual sense. That's not a real smell. But you're still smelling the rose. You can do it with your eyes. You can see spiritual things that aren't in front of you physically. And it's called your third eye in Eastern mysticism and all of that. But it's called our mind's eye. God put it there. It's so we can see, so we have prophetic vision, so we can see things in the spirit. Now, I implore you to invest in your faith at meditation and things to help open that part of your mind so that you can imagine and see and visualize the things that God wants you to see and visualize. Take, for example, when we pray, we want to lift up a brother or a sister in prayer. They may have an issue of health with their health. So we visualize them in our mind's eye. And as we visualize them in our mind's eye, we see them rectified in our mind's eye. We see them in our mind's eye from within us. When we pray, we're praying to a God within, not a God without, because everything we see is a projection of not only our personal imagination, but the rest of God everywhere else is his imagination. Everything is created by God's imagination, including us and our own thoughts. So when we come to that place, there is nothing but ear, a share, ear. I am who I am. And that's it. Now, when you come to a place like that, you just have to acknowledge in a state of mind every day that you are walking with the God of Israel. Acknowledge his pre the precious blood of Yeshua, who Christians call Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach is Yeshua, salvation of the God of Israel, the God yud heh vav -Hey, right? You can focus on him every day knowing and acknowledging that he's in here, not out there. You don't have to pray to Jesus up there or over there or across the sea and go here and go. No, none of that. Just pray here and in here. See your brother, see your sister in the way that they should be for themselves. Use the golden rule. Treat others as you would have others treat you also. You do that knowing that they are I am, ie ashe. I am who I am. Ie ashe ie. If they see you as I am and you see them as I am and you love one another as I am, do unto I am as others would do unto I am, there's the answer. If other people are mistreating us, if other people are hurting us, let it go. Pray for them. When we have to act to defend people, when we have to step in, we do. When we have to enter a fight and fight a physical battle, we will. But we also will do what we can where we know that only God is going to be the one who can change the hearts of an individual, those who have been called through the Holy One of Israel and his precious son, our Messiah, Yeshua. God never changes. But yesterday, today, and tomorrow is now. Yesterday is now. Was now. Was now. Now is now, and tomorrow will be now. 
So everything is now and God is now. That's the vortex. You're walking in that vortex. Acknowledge it and see it and understand it. It's in here. It's in here. You can't see it physically, but it's there. It's in nature. It's everywhere. Have a look at the little way the hair on our head in this area here from the time we were a baby. You can see it on a lot of people how in our skull it twirls around just here. It does it every in you know, heaps of other places. The vortex you can see everywhere. But in the centre of that is the vortex. The energy is flowing like that torus in that slide that I shared with you earlier. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. It's gone on for some time. And I pray that it has enlightened you in some way and that you too will grow in your faith and be encouraged by this message. Because once we are able to connect with the fact that we are I am and treat each other like we are I am, we understand the energy of love as we walk in that vortex. We understand the holy name of God and why that name upon us will enable us to walk in his grace, his love, his mercy, his compassion. And then it's going to give us a clearer way to express the message out, to, 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 to carry out the very purpose that we have as followers of Yeshua, as servants of the God of Israel, and that God never changes. So that's the end of my presentation today. God bless you all, and I pray that it all is truly something that will encourage you. God bless you. Have a lovely week, and may I be able to do another teaching in the near future that will also assist. Anybody who has questions, I'm more than happy to try to answer questions. Please send me uh, a message in Messenger or write a message as you see this uh, posted on Facebook and I will attempt to answer these things. So God bless you. Have a lovely week and we'll speak to you again next time we do one of these recordings. Bye. Thank you.